Hello from American Losses today, and welcome back to our channel. In the past few days, we have received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Obin Defoe, October 29, 1972 to August 28, 2024, was an American actor and yoga instructor, best known for his roles as Bodie Wells on Dawson's Creek and Rachnor in Stargate SG-1. Of Nigerian heritage, Difa was celebrated for his ability to bring depth and authenticity to his characters, earning him a devoted fanbase and respect within the entertainment industry. In August 2019, Difo's life took a tragic turn when he was struck by a car driven by an intoxicated driver, resulting in the loss of both legs above the knee. Despite this devastating setback, his indomitable spirit remained unbroken. Difo became a passionate advocate for people with disabilities using his platform to inspire and uplift others. On August 28, 2024, Obin Defoe passed away at the age of 51, leaving behind a legacy defined by resilience, strength, and a commitment to empowering others. His unforgettable performances continue to resonate with audiences, ensuring his impact on the world endures. Larry Johnson, February 8, 1945 to August 31, 2024, known professionally as Sonny King, was a trailblazing American professional wrestler. He gained prominence in the World Wide Wrestling Federation, WWWF, where he won the WWWF Tag Team Championship and became one of the first African Americans to hold a title in what would later become WWE. Originally a professional boxer, Johnson transitioned to wrestling after being inspired by Ernie Ladd and began his training in Detroit. In 1972, he teamed with Chief Jay Strongbow to win the WWWF World Tag Team Championship. Johnson's career also included stints in NWA Mid-Atlantic and managing wrestlers in Memphis. He survived a dramatic near-fatal stabbing incident in the 1980s, which involved severe injuries and emergency surgery. Despite these challenges, Johnson's impact on wrestling remained profound. He retired in the mid-1980s, leaving behind a legacy of resilience and pioneering achievements that continue to influence the sport. Isaac Freeman III, August 6, 1968 to August 30, 2024, widely known by his stage name Fatman Scoop, was an influential American rapper, hype man, and radio personality. Renowned for his powerful and energetic vocal style, Freeman gained prominence for his guest appearances on Missy Elliott's 2005 single, Lose Control, and Mariah Carey's It's Like That. He also achieved notable success with his 1999 hit single Be Faithful, featuring the Crooklyn clan, which topped the UK singles chart in 2003. Freeman had two children and was married twice, including a 13-year marriage to Shanda Freeman. On August 30, 2024, Freeman collapsed during a performance in Hamden, Connecticut. Despite immediate CPR and a rushed hospital visit, he passed away the following day at the age of 56. His final words, spoken with labored breathing before losing consciousness, were, If you came here to party, make some noise. Freeman's legacy endures through his iconic contributions to hip-hop and his unforgettable stage presence. John Michael Gaudreau, August 13, 1993 to August 29, 2024, widely known as Johnny Hockey, was a celebrated American ice hockey winger with a distinguished 11-season NHL career. His journey began at Boston College where he won the Hobie Baker Award in 2014 as the top NCAA player. Drafted by the Calgary Flames in 2011, Gaudreau quickly made an impact, earning a spot in the 2015 NHL All-Star Game and being named to the All-Rookie Team. He also won the Lady Bing Memorial Trophy for sportsmanship during the 2016-17 season. In 2022, Gaudreau signed with the Columbus Blue Jackets, where he played for his final two seasons. Tragically, on August 29, 2024, he and his younger brother, Matthew, were killed by an alleged drunk driver while cycling in Oldman's Township, New Jersey. Born in Salem, New Jersey, Gaudreau's legacy is marked by his exceptional achievements in hockey and his enduring impact on the sport. 
His career remains a testament to his talent and dedication. Steve Silberman, December 23, 1957 to August 28, 2024, was a notable American writer and editor for Wired magazine, where he made significant contributions for over two decades. He received the AAAS Kavli Science Journalism Award for magazine writing in 2010 for his influential article, The Placebo Problem, which examined the role of placebos in the pharmaceutical industry. Silberman's 2015 book, Neurotribes, which delves into autism rights and the neurodiversity movement, was awarded the Samuel Johnson Prize and widely praised for its comprehensive history of autism. His Wired article, The Geek Syndrome, is recognized for its cultural impact within the autism community. Silberman's Twitter account was listed by Time magazine as one of the best in 2011. He also delivered a keynote address at the UN on World Autism Awareness Day in 2016. While Neurotribes faced some criticism, it remains a crucial work in autism advocacy and understanding, reflecting Silberman's lasting influence in journalism and social issues. Milton Robert Carr, March 27, 1943, to August 27, 2024, was a distinguished American lawyer, academic, and politician from Michigan. Carr served in the U.S. House of Representatives for eight terms from Michigan's 6th Congressional District and one term from the 8th District. His congressional career experienced a two-year hiatus when he lost his seat to Jim Dunn in 1980 but was re-elected in 1982. After leaving Congress, Carr became of counsel at a communications law firm in Washington, D.C., in 2005. He was also active with the United States Association of Former Members of Congress, serving on its board of directors. Born in Janesville, Wisconsin, Carr earned a B.S. from the University of Wisconsin-Madison in 1965 and a J.D. from the University of Wisconsin Law School in 1968. He also completed graduate work at Michigan State University and was admitted to the bars of Wisconsin and Michigan in 1968 and 1969, respectively. Carr began his legal career in Lansing, Michigan, and served as Michigan Assistant Attorney General from 1970 to 1972. Sidney Raymond Udy, December 16, 1960 to August 26, 2024, was a celebrated American professional wrestler, known for his impactful careers in WWF and WCW under the ring names Sid Justice, Sid Vicious, and Psycho Sid. Udy was a six-time world champion, having won the WWF Championship twice, the WCW World Heavyweight Championship twice, and the USWA Unified World Heavyweight Championship twice. He also held the WCW United States Heavyweight Championship once. Udy headlined major wrestling events, including WrestleMania 8, WrestleMania 13, and Starcade. Returning to WCW in 1999, he joined Randy Savage's Team Madness and was known as the Millennium Man. He won the WCW United States Heavyweight Championship from Chris Benoit at Fall Brawl, but lost it to Goldberg at Halloween Havoc. The feud with Goldberg ended with Udy's defeat in an I Quit match at Mayhem, effectively concluding his streak. Danelle Barrett, July 20, 1967 to August 26, 2024, was a distinguished Rear Admiral, lower half, in the United States Navy, one of fewer than 200 women to achieve this rank. Born in Buffalo, New York, Barrett had three brothers. She graduated from Boston University in 1989 with a Bachelor of Arts in History and later earned a Master's of Arts in Management, National Security Strategic Studies, and Human Resources Development, as well as a Master of Science in Information Management. Barrett was married and had one daughter. In 2020, she joined the board of directors for KVH Industries and also served on the boards of Progressive Insurance, ShoulderUp, Protego Trust Bank, and the Federal Home Loan Bank of New York. Additionally, she appeared as an extra in several movies and TV shows. Diagnosed with brain cancer in 2023, Barrett became an advocate for experimental treatments and mentorship. She passed away on August 26, 2024, at the age of 57. Gollum Reza Afkami, 1936, August 26, 2024, was a distinguished Iranian-born American scholar, author, and educator, as well as a notable government official in Pahlavi, Iran. He was the senior scholar and director of social science research and international studies at the Foundation for Iranian Studies in Bethesda, Maryland, which focuses on Iranian history, culture, and politics. Before the Iranian Revolution, Afkami held significant positions, 
including Secretary General of Iran's National Committee for the World Literacy Program and Deputy Minister of Interior. He also served as a professor of politics and associate dean at the National University of Iran. From 1980 to 1983, Afkami was a visiting scholar at Stanford University's Hoover Institution, where he studied development issues and lectured on Middle Eastern relations. His research contributed to a text on the Iranian Revolution. Afkami passed away on August 26, 2024, at the age of 87. His career left a lasting impact on the field of Iranian studies and Middle Eastern scholarship. Michael Lerner, February 11, 1943 to August 28, 2024, was an American political activist, the editor of Tikkun, a progressive Jewish interfaith magazine, and rabbi of Beit Tikkun Synagogue in Berkeley, California. Born in Newark, New Jersey, Lerner attended Far Brook Country Day School, where he experienced a rich exposure to Christian teachings, though he felt religiously isolated. He later switched to a public school in his predominantly Jewish neighborhood and graduated from Weequahic High School in 1960. Lerner earned a BA from Columbia University and completed a PhD in philosophy at the University of California, Berkeley, in 1972. In 1977, he obtained a PhD in clinical-slash-social psychology from the Wright Institute in Berkeley. Throughout his career, Lerner was a significant figure in progressive Jewish thought, interfaith dialogue, and social justice advocacy. His contributions through Tikkun and his work at Beit Tikkun left a lasting impact on both academic and religious communities. Donald Ralph Wirt, July 29, 1938 to August 24, 2024, nicknamed Coyote, was an American professional baseball player renowned for his time in Major League Baseball from 1963 to 1971. Primarily a third baseman, Wirt played most notably with the Detroit Tigers, where he earned all-star honors and was part of the 1968 World Series champion team. Despite being overshadowed by Hall of Famer Brooks Robinson, Wirt was highly regarded for his exceptional fielding skills. He made his major league debut in 1963 and became the Tigers' regular third baseman in 1964, holding the position until 1970. Known more for his defensive prowess than his batting, Wirt played all 162 games in 1965, leading American League third baseman with a .976 fielding percentage, the only year in the 1960s where a third baseman other than Robinson led in fielding. Wirt also had a standout year in 1965 with 159 hits, a .341 on-base percentage, and 12 home runs. His best batting season came in 1966, featuring a .268 average, 20 doubles, and 70 RBIs. Russell Lamar Malone, November 8, 1963 to August 23, 2024, was an acclaimed American jazz guitarist known for his collaborations with Jimmy Smith, Harry Connick Jr., and Diana Krall. Born in Albany, Georgia, Malone began playing guitar at age four, inspired by B.B. King and the Dixie Hummingbirds. A turning point in his career came in 1988 when he joined Jimmy Smith's band, followed by stints with Connick Jr. and Diana Krall contributing to Grammy-nominated albums. Malone's work with Kral included the award-winning When I Look In Your Eyes. He also collaborated with pianist Benny Green, releasing notable albums like Kaleidoscope and Bluebird. His extensive career included touring with jazz giants like Ron Carter and performing with Sonny Rollins. Malone recorded live performances for Live at Jazz Standard and Triple Play. He died from a heart attack on August 23, 2024, in Tokyo, while on tour with Carter and Donald Vega. Mark Randall Gwynn, 1963, August 2024, was a distinguished American law enforcement officer, serving as the director of the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, TBI, from 2004 to 2018. He was the first African American to hold this position, marking a significant milestone in the agency's history. Gwynn began his career as a patrolman with the McMinnville Police Department in 1985 and joined the TBI as a special agent in 1988. He advanced to executive officer in 1996 and became assistant director in 2001, overseeing the Forensic Services Division. Gwynn played a key role in establishing the state's fusion center and worked on legislation to combat methamphetamine production. His extensive training included programs at the FBI National Academy and Harvard University. He was recognized with awards such as the Distinguished African American Alumni Award from Middle Tennessee State University. 
Gwen retired in 2018, leading a lasting legacy in Tennessee law enforcement. William James Pascrell Jr., January 25, 1937 to August 21, 2024, was a prominent American politician who represented New Jersey in the U.S. House of Representatives from 1997 until his death in 2024. A member of the Democratic Party and a native of Patterson, Pascal was a significant figure in New Jersey politics. Before his tenure in Congress, he served four terms in the New Jersey General Assembly starting in 1988 and was elected mayor of Patterson for two terms. Elected to the House in 1996 for New Jersey's 8th Congressional District, he later won a primary against fellow Democrat Steve Rothman in 2012, following redistricting. He represented the 9th District until his passing. Born to Italian immigrant parents, Pascal attended St. George's Elementary School and graduated from St. John the Baptist High School. He served in the U.S. Army and Army Reserves and earned degrees from Fordham University. He also had a career in education, teaching at Paramus High School and Fairleigh Dickinson University, and serving on various educational boards. Thelma Cornelia Davidson Adair, August 29, 1920, to August 21, 2024, was a renowned American educator and Presbyterian church leader. She was a key figure in Church Women United, advocating for human rights and justice. As an ordained elder at Mount Morris Ascension Presbyterian Church in Harlem, she became the moderator of the 1976 Assembly of the United Presbyterian Church in the United States of America, UPCUSA. Adair was married to Rev. Arthur Eugene Adair, who founded the church and served until his death in 1979. She was instrumental in establishing Head Start programs in Harlem and organized the M.T. Morris UPC's Project Uplift, which became the Arthur Eugene and Thelma Adair Community Life Center Head Start. Her writings on early childhood education are highly regarded. In 1976, she became the first black woman to serve as moderator of the General Assembly for the Presbyterian Church, traveling to 115 countries. Adair also helped found Presbyterian Senior Services and led Church Women United from 1980 to 1984. Alvin Austin Adels Jr., November 7, 1936 to August 20, 2024, was an iconic American basketball player, coach, and executive who dedicated his entire career to the Golden State Warriors. Known as the Destroyer, Adels played point guard and was drafted by the Warriors in 1960, spending 11 seasons with them including their move from Philadelphia to the San Francisco Bay Area. He took on the role of player coach during the 1970-71 season, guiding the Warriors to an NBA championship in 1975. After retiring as a player, Adels remained with the Warriors as head coach until 1983 and then served as general manager until 1986. His number 16 was retired by the team in 1977 and he was inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in 2019. Born in Newark, New Jersey, Adels graduated from Weequahic High School and earned a degree in physical education and history from North Carolina A&T State University. Initially planning to return to Newark to coach locally, he ultimately accepted the Warriors' draft offer, launching a storied career. Maria Branyas Moreira, March 4, 1907 to August 19, 2024, was an American Catalan supercentenarian who held the title of the world's oldest verified living person until her passing at 117 years old. Born in San Francisco to a Catalan family, Branyas moved with her family to Texas and New Orleans before returning to Catalonia in 1915 due to her father's declining health. Branyas's father, a journalist, died during their voyage back to Europe, and the family settled in Barcelona before moving to Banyols. In 1931, she married Joan Moret, a traumatologist, with whom she had three children. During the Spanish Civil War, Branyas worked as a nurse alongside her husband. After Moret's death in 1976, Branyas lived in Girona and became involved in various activities, including traveling and taking up hobbies like sewing and music. She moved to a nursing home in Olet in 2000, where she continued to stay active until her mobility declined. Branyas, who had 11 grandchildren, used a voice-to-text platform to communicate due to her hearing loss. Philip John Donahue, December 21, 1935, to August 18, 2024, was a pioneering American media personality and creator of The Phil Donahue Show. Airing from 1967 to 1996, the show was revolutionary for its format, 
featuring audience participation and tackling contentious issues like abortion, civil rights, and consumer protection. Donahue was known for his engaging style and was often referred to as the king of daytime talk. Donahue's frequent guest, Ralph Nader, highlighted his commitment to social issues. The show's impact was recognized by Oprah Winfrey, who credited Donahue with paving the way for future talk shows. In 1996, he was ranked number 42 on TV Guide's list of the 50 greatest TV stars of all time. In his personal life, Donahue married Margaret Cooney in 1958, with whom he had five children. They divorced in 1975. He later married actress Marlo Thomas in 1980. Donahue briefly hosted a talk show on MSNBC and was considered for the game show Greed in 1999. He passed away on August 18, 2024, in Manhattan, surrounded by family and his golden retriever, Charlie, Helen Elizabeth Fisher, May 31, 1945, to August 17, 2024, was a renowned American anthropologist and researcher. As a senior research fellow at the Kinsey Institute and a member of the Center for Human Evolutionary Studies at Rutgers University, she specialized in the biological basis of romantic love. Fisher was known for her groundbreaking MRI studies, which linked romantic love to brain regions like the ventral tegmental area, responsible for dopamine production. In 2005, she contributed to the creation of Chemistry.com for Match.com, leveraging her research in dating algorithms. Fisher was featured in TED Talks, the ABC News special, Why Him? Why Her? and the PBS Nova documentary, How to Find Love Online. Her research highlighted the role of neurochemistry in maintaining long-term relationships, emphasizing physical contact, novel experiences, and positive communication. Fisher passed away from cancer in the Bronx at the age of 79. Virginia Fortune Ogilvie, Countess of Airlie, May Ryan, February 9, 1933 to August 17, 2024, was an American-born lady of the bedchamber to Queen Elizabeth II. Born in Mayfair, London, she was the daughter of John Barry Ryan Jr. and Margaret Kahn. Her mother was the daughter of financier Otto Hermann Kahn, and her father was the grandson of Thomas Fortune Ryan. Virginia was raised in New York City and Newport, Rhode Island. She received her education at the Burley School in Manhattan and the James Franklin School of Professional Arts. In 1950, she made her debut into society with a ball at the Waldorf Astoria, where other debutantes included Lee Bouvier. She also held her own ball at the St. Regis. Virginia's role as Lady of the Bedchamber highlighted her distinguished position within British society. She was well regarded for her grace and service, and her contributions to the royal household were deeply valued. Landon Young Jones Jr., November 4, 1943 to August 17, 2024, was an American editor and author best known as the managing editor of People magazine and for his biography of William Clark. William Clark and the Shaping of the West. After graduating in 1966, Jones began his career at Time Incorporated, writing for Time magazine before editing Princeton Alumni Weekly from 1971 to 1974. He joined People magazine at its inception in 1974 and became its managing editor in 1989, a role he held for eight years. During his tenure, he oversaw a quadrupling in sales and the launch of related publications including In Touch and People in Espanol. Jones also edited The Essential Lewis and Clark and authored Great Expectations, America and the Baby Boom Generation. Publishers Weekly praised him as an astute chronicler of celebrity culture for his book, Celebrity Nation. He lived in Princeton, New Jersey, and maintained a residence near Bozeman, Montana. Jones passed away from complications of myelofibrosis on August 17, 2024, at the age of 80. Luther Kent, June 23, 1948 to August 16, 2024, was an American blues singer known for his big, soulful voice and the group Luther Kent and Trick Bag. Born Kent Rowell in New Orleans, Louisiana, he began singing professionally at 14 and released his first record with Montel Records. Influenced by Bobby Bland and Ray Charles, Kent led the group Cold Grits and briefly joined Blood, Sweat and Tears in 1974, though he did not record with them due to contractual issues. In 1977, he released his debut solo album, World Class, and later formed Luther Kent and Trick Bag in 1978. The band was active through the 1980s and 1990s. 
Kent also released a gospel album in 1996 with John Lee and the Heralds of Christ. He toured Italy in 2006 with Roby Zonka, resulting in the album Magic Box. Kent passed away on August 16, 2024, at 76. Goldie Jean Hahn, born on November 21, 1945, is a renowned American actress who first gained widespread recognition through her work on NBC's sketch comedy show Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In, 1968-1970. Her breakout performance led to her winning both the Academy Award and the Golden Globe Award for Best Supporting Actress for her role in Cactus Flower, 1969. Han's filmography includes a variety of memorable roles in movies such as There's a Girl in My Soup, 1970, Butterflies Are Free, 1972, The Sugarland Express, 1974, Shampoo, 1975, Foul Play, 1978, Seems Like Old Times, 1980, and Private Benjamin, 1980. Her portrayal of the title character in Private Benjamin earned her a nomination for the Academy Award for Best Actress. She continued to captivate audiences with performances in Overboard, 1987, Bird on a Wire, 1990, Death Becomes Her, 1992, House of Sitter, 1992, The First Wives Club, 1996, The Out of Towners, 1999, and The Banger Sisters, 2002. After a brief hiatus from film, Hahn returned to the screen in Snatched, 2017, The Christmas Chronicles, 2018, and its sequel, The Christmas Chronicles 2, 2020. Beyond her acting career, Hahn is the mother of actors Oliver Hudson, Kate Hudson, and Wyatt Russell. She has been in a long-term relationship with actor Kurt Russell since 1983. In 2003, she established the Hahn Foundation, dedicated to educating underprivileged children. Hahn is also known for her interest in meditation and spirituality. In a 2012 interview, she mentioned, I don't think of myself as a Buddhist. I was born Jewish, and I consider that my religion. She emphasized that developing a spiritual life is more important than adhering to a specific religion. Han is also a vocal supporter of the LGBT community, condemning discriminatory laws in countries like Nigeria, describing them as man's inhumanity to man of the first order.